I am not a big fan of topping electronics. I don't like them. I'll tell you the reason why I don't like them. But today we're talking about the topping A90D. It's a discrete headphone amp preamp. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this topping headphone amp. Background, why don't I like topping? Well, I used to not really have an opinion one way or the other. Actually, I thought they were what I would consider to be the top tier of the Chinese manufacturers. And then I felt like they got a little bit big for their britches. It was when they started putting TRS outputs and inputs on their products. I don't know why that rubbed me the wrong way. Because it shouldn't, but I think the stance or the viewpoint that they took about TRS connections it's just not a common connection. Most enthusiast audiophiles that have balanced connections are not using TRS connections. They are using XLR connections. And even in the headphone game, a lot of times it's the 4.4 Pentagon or Pentacon or the 2.5 millimeter balance connector. So the TRS balance connector is somewhat of an outlier. And then they have the L90, I believe which is a fantastic sounding amplifier. But again, it had wonky inputs, the TRS inputs. There have been some other products. I think the little tiny speaker amp, outstanding, had 3255 amp chip, but it only had those TRS connectors. And when I brought it up to somebody, they said, just adapt them, I'm gonna just, just adapt them or whatever. No, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that. So that rubbed me the wrong way on topping. And I also think they're getting really expensive. Stuff from topping, it continues to go up in price just because, and I'm not saying the packaging is the price increase, but when you look at the packaging now, you can tell that they're really trying to position themselves as a more premium brand. And then the topping uh, E30 Mark II, I thought sounded terrible. And then you have products like the D5 Pro Plus, something like that. The D3 Pro Plus that's significantly cheaper sounds very similar. I think it's, I think I know what it is. I think it was the A90SE was the first time topping really made me mad because they put out this $900 DAC and it sounded good, but it was $900. Then they kind of redeemed themselves with the topping E50. That's a $200 DAC, which pretty much sounds exactly like the topping D90SE. And they also chase measurements, which is cool. I guess you got to have some type of vision for the company. But I think in all this constant chasing of lower THDs, higher dynamic ranges, one can miss the boat because it's about sound quality. The good news is every now and again, they get one right. And the A90, they got right. It's still too expensive though. Take a look at it. I like, first of all, I like the look. All right, on the front, there on one side you have the pre, the headphone amp, and then the power. I don't know what that little flower looking thing is. I'm sure it's there for a reason. Then you have the RCA XLR and then the EXT, which I actually didn't do. I use this as a headphone amp, which it mainly is. It's got a nice weight to it too. And then I also use this as a preamp, testing another headphone amp at the same time. And you can have the preamp and the headphone amp going at the same time. On the back, this thing right here is the extender interface, which means you can actually do firmware updates on this. And I think connect, I don't know, auxiliary devices later on. So this to me looks like a little bit of future proofing, but once again, it's stopping doing their own thing, which in essence isn't terrible because someone's gotta innovate. But I think taking the line in the sand with the stupid TRS connectors really just rubbed me the wrong way. XLR in, RCA in, XLR out, RCA out. You have a ground lift, which is pretty cool. Although I don't know how often people are gonna use it because I've listened to a lot of stuff and rarely have I ever had to use any type of ground lift, but it's there. And then next to that, internal power supply, Master power on off. The other thing that is awesome about this product, it has a remote control. It controls everything, specifically volume. 
which I think is the main reason why one wants a remote control on a headphone amp slash preamp because at that point now it becomes a real preamp because if you're on a desk that's fine but I can see this thing kind of anchoring a small room system or a really good two channel system something like a soundbar replacement or something where you have everything in one room and if you don't have a remote control it's just not nearly nearly as convenient one can kind of get around that with digital volume control on some decks but you really want the volume control in the preamp and this has a stepped ladder relay volume control so it's a really good volume control and it has a remote control the indicator for the volume i absolutely love because i think it's kind of like a throwback to the old high school football scoreboards and i love it because you can see it all the way across the room and it's not like those little tiny displays with the pretty fonts and everything like that it's just a number and you can see it it's very old school and i love it let's talk about how it sounds All right, how it sounds. I use the HiFiMan Edition XS as well as the Meze 109 Pros. Those are both 500 and I think $700 headphones respectively. So I figured I'd put those on a $600 headphone amp. I also use the Sennheiser uh, Drop HD6 XX. I compared this to the Gishelli Labs Balanced E2 headphone amp. It's a $230 headphone amp, okay? So we have a $600 headphone amp, and that can also be used as a preamp. A $600, it's balanced only though, Six, sorry, $600 headphone preamp versus a $230 headphone preamp, okay? Throw me away, corn. There's an overarching theme between the E2 and the A90D, and D stands for discrete, which means it's not all op amp based. They have discrete parts. I still think it's somewhat board driven. It's not just like capacitors and transistors and stuff like this, but there are transistors in here. Anyway, this is a more traditional way or an older school way of doing amplifiers. And most of the stuff, like if you get a phono preamp and it's all discrete, it's going to cost more and it's going to sound better. So an all discrete unit usually signifies that it's going to sound better. Not always, but usually. Anyway, overarching theme between the E2 and the E2 is no slouch. Actually, the E2 is a great headphone amplifier, but it's only balanced. There's no single ended output on the E2. They also have the Irish, which is a single ended headphone amplifier from Gishelli. Anyway, Gishelli. Anyway, uh, throw me away. There's better bass separation on the A90, um, better instrument separation on the A90 as well. Tonally and sonically, as far as what the A90 concentrated on versus the E2, I felt like the A90 was very neutral, where I thought the E2 concentrated a little bit more on the lower mid-range and the bass. It wasn't quite as tight as the A90 though, but overall kind of, the A90 is kind of like a magnifying glass into the music and it almost feels a little bit like there's a slight boost on the bottom and a slight boost on the top. So almost just the smallest of V curve, which I personally like, but this sounds to me like the L90, LA90, their fancy, really good power amplifier. This also sounds a lot to me like the PA5, which is a speaker amp, Texas Instruments 3255 Class D, great sounding. Unfortunately, they weren't super reliable and a bunch of people had issues with them, but when they worked, they sounded great. It is that overwhelmingly powerful sound that is remarkably clean. That's what this sounds like. The E2 from Gishelli Labs just sounded like it had more personality. Think kind of a vintage Marantz receiver. That's the vibe I get from the E2. However, there is no dismissing just how clean the A90D is. And for most people, I think most people are gonna like the A90D better. But they should, unless you're on a budget, then you'll probably like the E2 better if you're only in the balance. With all that said though, I quickly forgot about which amp I was listening to because they were both so good and they were both so engaging. 
when I did some quick A-B testing or I listened to 30 seconds and then switched it to the other amp and listened to 30 seconds, the takeaway is A90 is cleaner, A90 is less veiled, A90 has better instrument separation. I think the soundstage and largeness is somewhat similar, but because there's better instrument separation, I think the A90D does sound bigger. Again, though, there's n I'm taking nothing away from the E2 at $230 remarkable headphone amplifier at 230. So what are my final thoughts? Is it worth the $600 in the past, the LA90, which is their speaker amplifier? I loved it, thought it sounded great. Still thought it was overpriced. The D90SE sounded great, loved it. Thought it was ridiculously overpriced. However, the A90D, I don't think it's overpriced. I think it is worth every penny of $600, if only because it's a preamp with a remote and a killer headphone amplifier. If you're using it as a preamp, you only have two inputs. So you have balanced and you have single-ended. If you're gonna make it work, basically you're gonna have to use a DAC that has a balanced output. And then you do all your digital switching on that and then you have one analog input via RCA. With that setup, a DAC that has all the switching and a phono preamp, this could be awesome. I just haven't heard another headphone amp that is this good. And I say that like reluctantly because I don't want it to be good. Topping, I don't love topping. I think they're overpriced. I think this is the first product though that kind of comes in and is like, it's worth it. Headphone amps are weird. Headphone aficionados are weird because it is nothing to spend a thousand dollars on a set of headphones and i think when they're talking about like entry level headphone amps at six hundred dollars that makes me mad i mean an entry level headphone amp is like sixty to a hundred dollars but if you're looking for probably the best headphone amplifier i've heard this is it oh by the way it also has a whopping 9.8 watts in the 16 ohms. Almost 10 watts in the 16 ohms. I'm sure a speaker would shut this in because of the low impedance, but this thing is more powerful than the majority of the tube amps out there. So it'd be interesting if anybody ever tried to rig up some type of speaker thing that they could hook up to here and drive some speakers. Um, I kind of love it. I kind of don't love the price again, but I don't feel this is as overpriced, if overpriced is all when you compare it to the D90SE, which incidentally has dropped in price. Ooh, big surprise. And the LA90, which I think is overpriced. It's a great speaker amp. It sounds awesome. I still think it's overpriced. So that's it, do I recommend it? Sure. Yeah, if you, got the, if you have the money for it, I don't think you can do much better. And I haven't heard much better. Although I do have, I have this shit Lear in here which probably isn't gonna be as clean, but heck, I don't care. It's got a huge like light bulb looking tube on the top. Anyway, looking forward to that. Listening to more headphones lately. Um, by the way, the headphones that sounded the best on this, uh, Hyphaman Edition XS. I did think the Meze 109 Pro really came to life on this thing. Even though those don't need a ton of power, I think putting a ton of power on it really brought them to life. I think the 6XX sounded the best that I've ever heard them on the uh, topping, so. Great product. I didn't want it to be, but it's still a great product. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Man. Every Sunday night, we have Patreon-only Zooms, Patreon-only Discord, Patreon-only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Apos Audio sent me this, so I will link them in the description. Thank you, Apos Audio. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click on the link. Sign up. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of dollars. You can also use the thanks button. Buy me a cup of coffee or buy the coffee mug itself. So many ways to support me. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything or support me. Just simply watching, liking the video, and subscribing is support enough. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your topping A90D, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man.